There you go. Now it's working. Okay, where do I go? Okay. You want to sit in my car? Wait, where's the bowl? How loud is it? Is it pretty good? Okay, tell your neighbors 106.9. 106.9. It's genius when it works. Okay, is everybody on 106.9, everybody can hear me? We can start? Yes, good? Okay. Welcome to all of you to the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this very different Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. Glad you all came out. Uh, this is going to be a little different uh, today. The way we're going to do the Lord's Supper, just so you don't have uh, any fears about it, the only person that's going to handle the elements is me. And I'll be wearing gloves. I wore gloves when I set communion up. I'm going to dip your wafer into the wine and hand it to you, and you will be the only one that touches it. So we don't have to worry about sneezing, uh, individual cups spilling, or touching the rims or whatnot. So that should work really well. We'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll do this today and we'll see if it uh, worked well. And then we'll do the same thing for Monday, Thursday. Good Friday will be recorded and streamed on the internet because of the nature of the service. Means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. The epistle for the Sunday of the Passion is from Philippians chapter 2. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality 
with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. The passion of our Lord is recorded by St. Matthew. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask, a very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the 12. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful, and began to say to him one after the other, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who had betrayed him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I would not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. 
remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleepy, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. <laughs> Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. <coughs> then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this had taken place, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Then those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. And Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus, that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. <coughs> and the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witness do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. <coughs> This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. 
When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Then when Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. <coughs> Then was fulfilled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And that they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to him, Whom do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with the Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there, and over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who crucified were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. 
And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remembered how that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by stealing the stone and setting a guard. This is the passion of our Lord. Having heard the passion of our Lord, we join together in the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Before we begin the sermon, I'm going to get a bottle of water. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A common phrase you're probably hearing a lot lately as we face another month of this voluntary exile until the virus dies off. Well, what are you going to do? Untold thousands of people 
certainly including many of you here today, are eager to do something, anything, to alleviate the burden on others, to love your neighbor as yourself, maybe even to relieve your own boredom a little bit. Despite our desire to contribute to solutions, despite our empathy for the plight of others, often we'd shrug our shoulders and say, well, but what can I really do? On our own, sometimes our words of encouragement seem meaningless and empty. It's like biting into a chocolate bunny on Easter morning, only to discover it's hollow. It looks good on the surface, but on the inside, it's a little disappointing. Think about the times when a friend or a stranger has given you words of encouragement. Think of how the weight on your shoulders was lifted when you heard the tests came back negative, or you and the baby can go home. Aren't we looking forward to the words, everyone can get back to their normal schedule now. The vaccine is here and it was a success. That kind of good news can really lighten the load on your conscience. But some words are far more glorious than those of any human being. And those are the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they are words that he gives for weary souls. The word of our sovereign Lord sustained his servant, the Messiah, our Savior. God sustained Jesus when Herod sought to kill him when he was just a baby to retain his earthly crown. He sustained him in the wilderness when he faced his temptation. The Lord sustained Jesus as he sweat blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he sustains his servant Jesus on the cross until our salvation was accomplished by Christ's death. The Lord sustained Jesus' body till the third day when he rose him from the dead and ensured our eternal life in him. Our Old Testament reading this morning is not only the words of the prophet Isaiah, but a foreshadowing of the action of Jesus Christ for each one of us. It is Jesus speaking to us, to our present situation. It foretells the activity of this Palm Sunday right on through the rest of Holy Week. Listen once more to the words. The Sovereign Lord has given me the capacity to be his spokesman so that I know how to help the weary. I offered my back to those who attacked, my jaws to those who tore out my beard. I did not hide my face from insults and spitting, but the Sovereign Lord helps me, so I am not humiliated. For that reason, I am steadfastly resolved. I know I will not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is close by. Who dares argue with me? Let us confront each other. Who is my accuser? Let him challenge me. Look, the Sovereign Lord helps me. Who dares to condemn me? The Word of God sustained his prophet Isaiah, supported the suffering servant, the Messiah, Jesus. In Isaiah's time, God's people were weary and downtrodden from war constantly, living in captivity. And God did not arbitrarily condemn them to that fate. They brought it upon themselves, as it is written, Behold, for your iniquities you were sold. And for your transgressions, your mother was sent away. But the Lord doesn't lack mercy for them. And he is far from powerless to save them. The Almighty Lord will send his servant and provide their salvation through him. God told Isaiah he would instruct him and that his word would sustain the weary. And the Lord likewise instructed his son, as it is written, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me, Jesus said. It is the servant of the Lord, Jesus, who will now suffer and become weary, and will die for us in agony on the cross. Isaiah was not deterred in his mission to God's people. The Lord tells him that he will sustain him with words in his time of weariness. 
in the same way the father supports his son in his trial and his passion. As the prophet of old was vindicated so that no man could argue with him or the word he brought, our Lord Jesus Christ is vindicated by his glorious resurrection for our salvation on Easter morning. As Jesus said of his suffering for you and for me, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. God sent his prophet Isaiah to proclaim words of comfort and peace to a people exhausted with oppression and captivity. And that same word, now the word made flesh, sustains you and me. We're often weary from the circumstances of our lives. Look how strange this right here is today. We're tired of being stuck at home. We're unable to go about our regular lives. We're getting tired. We're weary with taking precautions to avoid catching this virus. We're exhausted as this time of exile stretches out. Many are not able to go to work. Finances and food start to get thin. The future seems uncertain, even when we know that this trial also will pass. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says, the fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. The troubles of a world under the judgment of God do not detour around us. This virus and its repercussions are striking very close to home. We don't even know what the actual damages are yet going to be as this illness continues to rampage around the world. Not to change the subject, but New York and Washington State get the least amount of sunny days a year, although we residents of Northeast Ohio might beg to differ. The sun is always up there, shining down, but sometimes we don't see it for days or months because of cloudy weather. God's love and God's care are always there for us, but still, we do not continuously realize this because overwhelming fear and anxiety cloud our vision. In fact, at times, it seems like the only thing we can see are our problems. We are so worn out. But the most considerable burden that we bear is our sin and its resulting guilt. We're spiritually exhausted wondering if God has forgiven us, if he still loves us, wondering how we can get right with him again. And the answer is, we can't. But Jesus, the servant who suffered for us, he can. And he sustains us with the very words that sustained him. He invites the weary to come to him. The people to whom this invitation was first extended were burdened themselves by the legalism of the Pharisees and the scribes. They had no assurance of God's love or forgiveness. But Jesus makes our burden light, and it makes our yoke easy by assuring us that our sins have been forgiven. They have been atoned for by his blood. And in Holy Communion, he gives us that blood and his body to eat and to drink for the strengthening of our faith and the forgiveness of all of those sins and more. Paul quoted the words of our Old Testament reading this morning and made the point that just as the sovereign Lord vindicated his own son so that no accusation could be brought against him, neither can any charge be made against you and me. We are God's chosen ones, justified by the blood of Christ who even now intercedes for us. Whatever is causing our weariness at this moment in life, we have a Father who loves us, and he will cause all to work for our good. Today is Passion Sunday. Do you doubt the love of God? Look to, toward the cross. Rest assured that the words of our Savior will continue to sustain us. Words of love 
forgiveness and salvation. Are you weary? Look to the Lord. He will sustain you. Amen. May the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I have prayers. We pray. Let us pray for the church that the Lord would defend her against all her enemies and keep her true to Jesus Christ by the power of your word and spirit. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy, that she may endure the assaults of the evil one and remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom and those who have not yet heard the gospel and been brought to faith. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have gathered us as your church and promised that wherever two or three are together in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the particular vocations into which you have called us to serve in the church, home, and community. Grant to us every gift and blessing needful that we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability. Almighty Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left and hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Guide our president, the members of Congress, the governor of our state, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice and protecting the citizens entrusted to them. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our world out of crisis and back to stability. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all of our needs, and you have promised to be the strength of the weary, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of those disabled, and the peace of all who are distressed. Hear us on behalf of our nation and the world suffering pandemic and isolation. We especially pray for Roger, for Alex, for all those who are currently homebound, and all those we now name in our hearts. We pray that they may be well supplied by your grace in every time of trouble. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Give to your word success and deliver from error all those who live in darkness and fear, that they may walk in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ and have confidence for the trials of this world and hope for the world to come. Blessed Lord, you give food to the hungry and provide for all our needs in this mortal life. Grant to us a grateful heart and knowledge to use wisely and well all that you have entrusted to our care. Bless those who work to make, prepare, deliver, and serve our daily bread and give relief to those whose work has been halted. Holy Lord, as once your son was welcomed with palms and hosannas, Help us to welcome him who comes to us this day in the blessed sacrament of his body and blood. Guard us against false teaching, and help us to discern truth from error, that none may be led astray or lost from the fellowship of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, we pray, asking you to grant our prayers not for our sake, but for the sake of Christ alone. Teach our hearts to be content with your will, and to trust you will answer us with what is best for us at the right time for our need. So do we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again 
and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, praising you now and forevermore. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
miss anything. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith now unto everlasting life. Depart in joy and peace. Amen. Lord, let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that out of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. That's a good question. Um, Bob, what did you want to do? What did we decide to do?